Thanks for joining everybody. My name is Luke. I will be your teacher for this live class. This is a live class for English learners. Now we have some things to talk about. I'm looking forward to that. I hope you have questions ready to go. We're also going to be looking at the election results, which you may find exciting or not. And that is totally up to you. I won't uh, I won't say too much of my own opinion on this, but we're going to talk about how exactly that works because I've had several people ask, hey, what is going on and why is it going on? And I don't understand the American election thing, how it works exactly. So really it's going to be more of an exploration of how it works than of the, for example, politics. We're just going to take a look. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you, I would appreciate if you could hit the like button, that would be awesome. And also subscribe so that you can see future live classes, future videos, I post videos every week. And also, if you're working on your English seriously, don't forget to check out the full courses in the links in the description. Those are for those of you who are working seriously on your English skills, such as pronunciation or thinking in English, or idioms, and so on. All right, I'm just going to share this stream quickly. Give me a moment, and then we can um, we can get started with our, with our live class. If this is your first time joining, well, great. Why didn't you join before? Kind of disappointing. Wish you'd been here before, but oh well. You're here now, so that's fine. No, it's 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 great to have everyone who's here. I'm very excited. Well, excited is a strong word. Uh, all right. I think it's. I th I'm just. Sh I have to share this because because of YouTube. You may be watching this on Facebook or YouTube. I don't know. Either one is okay. But YouTube is a little funny when it comes to um, sharing stuff. Okay. Now we are for sure good. For sure, for sure. For sure, for sure. Okay. So we'll talk about the election first. That's the first thing. Many people have asked me because this is an English language learning channel hey Luke I see that there's an election going on over there in the United States or here in the United States if you live here but I'm not quite sure I understand how it works why am I looking at a map of states that turn red and blue why not just count all the votes and then decide who, who the president's going to be in the election. Well, it's not that simple. And because I've had several people now ask me this question, I thought we could just go over it quickly. Now, that will allow us to also talk about how Joe Biden won. For a few days, nobody knew the result. We'll talk about why that is exactly. Now, I'm not a political expert. I'm not a I'm not a an expert on voting predictions and things like that. But overall, I can give you a big picture, okay? And of course, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. So, first, the obvious question. Why not just count all the votes across the country? and say, oh, look, Joe Biden got the most votes, Joe Biden wins, or Donald Trump got the most votes, Donald Trump wins. It doesn't work like that, and there are a number of reasons, and it's a big debate about whether or not we should actually do that. But instead, we use this thing called the Electoral College. That's what it's called, the Electoral College. And the Electoral College is this group of people called electors. And they're the ones who actually vote, but they're not voting because they want to. 
they are selected or they are given to, for example, Donald Trump or Joe Biden based on the popular vote of each state. The popular vote is just the total number of votes. So the reason that you see how many vote, sorry, that's my door. The reason that you see how many votes there are in states is because those votes do decide who gets the electors. But then once that's done, then it doesn't matter what the popular vote is, how many total. Then it's the electors in each state who are given to each candidate. Maybe that's still a little confusing. So let's look at let's look at the map and talk about this a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pop over here to our election map. This is the one. This is just the one by the uh, New York Times, and you can see it still hasn't been announced officially. Right? Look at this. Why am I saying Joe Biden even won? It hasn't been announced. Look, it's just still showing that the race is going on. Well, I can explain. And maybe if I hit refresh, it will change. But um, this, is, this is how it works. You have in each state counties, right? And people vote in counties. This is one state. And you can see the number of votes inside of these counties. Now, if you look over here... <clears throat> you see Donald Trump, 56, 56.7%, Joseph Biden, uh, 41%. So, and they've counted over 81, or sorry, over 98% of the votes. What does that mean? That means that Donald Trump wins this state. Now, what does that mean? That means Donald Trump gets the electors from that state. The electors from the state are then added to his total. What total? This total. So there's a total number of electors, but in order to win, you need 270 electors. 270 electors. I believe there are 538 total electors in the United States, and they're divided up by state. So. Donald Trump gets the most votes in this state. Boom, he gets all the electors. Now, what decides how many electors there are in each state? That is based, as you might imagine, on population, right? So let's, let's zoom out here a little bit. And I'll look at New York. New York is for Joe Biden. It always will be blue probably and you can see here I don't know if you can see this little tab it says 29 EV that is the number of electors in the state of New York I'm gonna pop over to a map here so New York is this this one over here oh oh hey New York is this one with 29 that's where I live that's how many electors New York has. Based on what? Based on the population of New York, New York State. So, so if Joe Biden wins this state, he gets the most votes in this state, he gets all of the electors. It's not like it's broken by percentage. Oh, you won 48% of the vote, you get 48% of the electors. No, it is the total, all of the electors in the state if you win the state. So that's why we're talking about states. That's why in the map you see states turning blue, states turning red. They get everything, all of the electors in the state. Now look at this map. If I win, if I win this whole area here, all of this in the middle, not including Texas, it's not really a big deal. I mean, look at this. Look at all of these red states over here. Well, some of these are worth a lot, but a lot of these states are not worth that much. They don't have many electors because they have small populations. So if you look at the map, you, you would say, wow, look at Donald Trump is definitely going to win. Look how much red there is. But that's not the right way to look at it. You have to look at it based on the total number of 
electors and the electors in each state. So New York, boom, that's a big one. And Texas, boom, that's a big one for Donald Trump. Look at this, 38, 38 electors in the state. Uh, why do I keep why do I keep going back to this? I want to click on this. And then in California, that was for Joe Biden. That's always a big blue one. 55 electors. California has a huge population. 18 is a lot. 20 is a lot. And 29 is a lot. That's why Florida is always a very important state. So the reason that we know Joe Biden won now, even though they may not have announced it yet, is this. This year is different. The reason that we're getting the results later is due to something called mail-in ballots. This year, because of coronavirus, more people, many more people have been mailing in their votes, and you can do that. And what that means is it takes longer to count those votes, sometimes several days. So the reason that after Election Day, we still don't have a final result. Well, we do now. But the reason it's been a while is because they've been counting the mail-in ballots, the votes that people actually send in by mail. Now, how do then I know that that, that is good news for Joe Biden? Because statistically, it is far more likely for Democrats to vote by mail. That's just a thing that is kind of known out there. And so a couple days ago when you saw Donald Trump is in the lead in Pennsylvania, this has been the big state over here, Pennsylvania. Who's going to win Pennsylvania? If Donald Trump wins Pennsylvania, he can win, right? It's worth, how many votes is that worth? 20 votes. That's a big deal for Donald Trump. But the election was delayed because they're counting the mail-in votes. And the thing is, we know that those are going to generally go Democratic or blue, which is Joe Biden's political party. And so you kept seeing his numbers move toward Donald Trump because of that reason. They're counting the votes that came in by mail. And he passed. He passed Donald Trump, I think, last night in the counting. Now he's at 3 million totally in the state, 300,000 something. And as soon as that happens, you know it's it's done because it's not going to go the other direction. Suddenly, oh, there's a bunch of votes for Donald Trump by mail. No, <laughs> no. So even though this is still gray, it's not really gray. It's it, it will go blue if it's not already marked as blue. And you can see that 96% of votes have been counted. So then you might say, well, what about these? What about these other gray ones that haven't been announced yet? Well, it's not enough. Joe Biden is winning here. Joe Biden is winning in Nevada. Joe Biden is winning here, although that's very close. Donald Trump is winning here, but it's, it's not enough. So it's over. Joe Biden won. I'm not saying whether that's good or bad. I don't care, actually. <laughs> but that's how... It works. That's the reason that you see states turning colors. That is how it works in terms of why we don't just use the popular vote. It is a big debate. And that is why it has taken several days because of the mail in ballots. So if you have if you have any questions about how this works, again, I'm not an expert, but this stuff is not too complicated. And even an idiot like me can uh, can explain how voting works in the United States. So I, I look forward to your questions and I would like to know what you think about the results. Let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Also, hit the like button if you haven't already. I would really appreciate that. It helps the channel. And of course, check out my full courses in the links in the description. All right, so what do you guys think? Oh, we got a lot of people from Twitch today. That's weird. Is that coffee? Yes, it is.
What is going on on Twitch? You seem like you haven't been been sleeping. I didn't sleep very well. That's a, that's a very good observation. <laughs> what do I mean by Biden won? Biden won. That's what I mean. Biden won. That's what I mean. Um, if Biden wins, the U.S. is finished. Interesting point of view. You might be right. Who knows? Biden fooled people. They are cheating. Maybe. I love doors. <laughs> that is a beautiful comment. I love doors. I love doors too. They, they're they very useful. Extremely useful function. James Patrick. Hello. I prefer Trump. Biden is Maduro's friend. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I really don't care who, who, who won. It, it, honestly, this sounds horrible, but I didn't even vote. And I didn't vote because I don't care. I really don't care. Uh, I think I think both of them are fairly bad, and uh, generally speaking, they're both uh, kind of idiots. So I didn't vote, and and um, if one wins, if the other wins, who cares? All right. Yes, exactly my point. I love doors. This is just stupid. All right. So, guys, now, if you have any, we're going to shift over to our English mode. If you guys have any questions about this, about English, about culture, about grammar, about pronunciation, this is this is an English class, actually. So I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. If you asked a question yesterday and I didn't answer it, then I'll try my best to answer it. Just maybe repost the question and and um, we'll talk about it. If not, then we'll just we'll just leave it at that. But uh, I am happy to answer any questions you may have. If you don't have any questions, then I'm going to go watch The Mandalorian, which is now streaming. <clears throat> The Mandalorian is a TV series which I was looking forward to and the new season is up which is kind of exciting. This year I was the first one I really got attention <clears throat> to the US election. Like you, I don't really care about who's going to win or lose, but I love to know how uh, your vote system works. Yeah, well hopefully that's clear name if you, if you, if anything is not clear. Let me know. I I think I explained it clearly. Um, and it is it is a topic of debate. Some people think it's horrible. You can win the popular vote and lose the election. That means you can win the most votes, but you can lose the election. So think about how that would be. How would that be? Well, let's say you won New York and California and Texas and Florida. There are a lot of people in those states. Let's say the number of people who voted in those states was very high. A lot of people voted. But that doesn't increase the number of electors in the state. So if New York state has 29 electors, right? 29 electors. And 3 million people vote, just for example. Or... 10 million people vote, it doesn't make a difference. There are only 29 electors in New York State. It's been assigned to New York State. So let's say someone gets all of those states with huge populations and many people vote in those states. They actually, if you counted up all the votes in the country, they got the most votes. But because in the states that they won, they can only get the total number of electors, then whether they got 3 million votes or 10 million votes is irrelevant. It doesn't matter because you, you won the state. Congratulations. Once you won the state, then it doesn't matter how much you won the state by. If you won the state by 10 votes or 3 million votes, it doesn't matter as long as you won. You got the electors. So... 
In 2016, actually, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, but she lost the election. So she got the most votes, totally, but she still didn't win because she won a lot of votes in places like New York and California. A lot of people voted. She got tons of votes in those places, and she got those electors. But the number of votes she got didn't or wasn't reflected by the total number of electors because that doesn't change. Does that make sense? I hope that's clear. I know it's a little complicated. But is this system good for large countries? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. <clears throat> is it a bad idea, a good idea? I, I think it's... I don't know. I don't even know if people should be able to vote because people are so dumb, including me. No, I shouldn't say that. Democracy is good, but it's definitely flawed. And I think a lot of people go in and just choose based on some idiot on the Internet who told them to vote. You know, vote, vote. Oh, OK, I'll go vote. Who should I vote for? <laughs> they don't think about it or, or, you know, really work on it. I didn't vote, but I know exactly why I didn't vote. I have an opinion about it. I've thought about it deeply. I've researched it. I know why I didn't vote. And I think that uh, often voting in politics comes down to people's emotions. And that's fine, I guess. But it doesn't always lead to the best results. I mean, wouldn't it be cool if there was a really, really smart person who was president? Wouldn't that be awesome? But it's hard to imagine, right? In Brazil, we are forced to vote. I don't think that's real democracy, being honest. That's a good point, Janaki. If you're forced to vote, then you're going to just, or you could just, eh, and, and write something down or put something down. That's a fair point. I think that's a very fair point. The forced election thing sounds good in the first five seconds of saying it, but then you think about it for five more seconds and you realize, ooh, actually, ooh, that might lead to some pretty terrible choices. One million videos says, hi, Luke. Do you know what's the difference between the Republican Party and Democratic Party? So this is a good question. Generally speaking, the Republican Party is what we consider to be a conservative party in the United States, and the Democratic Party is what we call the liberal, more liberal party. Republicans, we say, are on the right, represented by red or an elephant. Democrats are on the left, the political left, represented by a donkey, blue. Now, it's not quite that simple, but those are the two big parties. There are actually many more political parties, but those are the two that are really relevant, that matter. There was a guy who was running in the Green Party this year, but nobody's talking about that guy because it doesn't matter. The Green Party doesn't matter. Or the Libertarian Party, it doesn't matter because they're not big enough, so they don't, they're not really in the conversation. So then inside of these parties, you have various dynamics or things going on. For example, in the Republican Party, you have generally conservatism. Being conservative means not that you're against change, but you represent the traditional values often, and Republicans tend to be an older age demographic, although that's not always true. And Republic, Republicans tend to uh, be less about social programs, for example, welfare and so on. They tend to try to make the government smaller, whereas Democrats are kind of the opposite. They tend to push for social programs and uh, benefits and things like that to help people who, who need help, who might not be able to... Uh, support themselves if they don't have a job, for example. That's just an example. Or health care, things like that. I mean, both parties care about health care, but in different ways. The Democrats tend to say that health care is uh, something that should be very easy for people to get, and the Republicans say it's a product, like a business, generally. 
Inside of the Republicans, there's the far right, and they're usually extremely religious Christian, and they tend to have more extreme views, like abortion should be illegal, for example, that sort of thing. Democrats, inside of that group, there's the far left. The far left would be something like Medicare for all, and uh, maybe ending the ending all wars right that the United States is in and maybe free university and college tuition that sort of thing now the interesting thing is that the far left is actually a lot closer to the middle of the country overall based on polling and political opinion than most people think it is based on polls Medicare for all is very pretty popular uh, $15 minimum wage very popular Ending wars is very popular, and a lot of the a lot of the views of the far left are very very popular. Universal college tuition, very popular. So they're just called the far left, right? But they're in the Democratic Party. Then you have people who are toward the center, and that's sort of the traditional or establishment. They often are more representative of large companies, organizations. And a lot of people, well, maybe I'm speaking in a biased perspective, see them as somewhat corrupt. Whether it's on the right or the left, corporate means they represent their big donors, huge corporations from medic from the medical industry or the pharmaceutical industry or the oil companies or or whoever will donate to their com campaigns and there's something called a quid pro quo in which they're expected to vote in favor of these large organizations uh, and that's why they're in place in the first place so that's generally centrist sort of in the middle but I would not say that centrist necessarily means the center of the country I would say centrist means more the establishment more more corporate and less on the edges right less about the political policies less about the actual policies and more about the process of government this is just my perspective so there's a lot inside of each party going on it's not like it's totally the same right um, and and that's that's how it works I mean uh, I'm biased obviously I have my own opinions and so I can't be totally fair to any side because I'm biased I have opinions so take that for what it is uh, but that, that's that's generally the overview and um, I'm somewhere in there <laughs> maybe you can guess where all right if you haven't already make sure you guys hit the like button that would be most appreciated don't forget to subscribe and also check out the full courses in the links in the description all right thanks 1 million views Matu says hi Luke how's it going it's going very well what do you think about the counting in Nevada so this is something that I don't know much about I haven't been very carefully watching the news I guess the question is will it change the results probably not Naomi says, what would be bias? Biased. Good. That's a great question. I like it. Naomi says, I'm sorry. What would be bias or biased? If you're biased, then where you stand reflects or affects how you see things around you. Right? Based on your opinion or how you feel about things you might try to be honest about something but in fact your opinion is slightly to this side or your description of this thing is slightly to one side because of where you're coming from because of your your values or whatever let me give you a couple of really simple examples that can show bias now bias could be a good thing could be a bad thing bias is really just being pulled to one side by something. So the classic example would be the parent of a kid who plays basketball who says, my son, to the coach, my son, he's the best player on the team. Why don't you let him play more? Why isn't he a starter? 
starter is the first five people on the basketball team. Why is he the seven man? My son's the best player on the team. Now, is the son the best player on the team? Well, maybe. But it's also possible that because of the relationship between that guy and that person, the player, he thinks that. It's his son. So he's biased. What he's saying is being pulled by the fact that he has a relationship with this person. This is his son. He wants his son to play more. He wants his son to be out there on the court. He has an interest in that. And so he can't see things without having lenses on. He can't see things objectively. If he didn't have kids on the team, any kids on the team, and he was just watching the players, he would say, oh, that kid's better, that kid's worse, and he might be unbiased. If you're unbiased, that means I don't have any starting point. I don't have anything that's pulling me this way or pulling me that way. But the father does. Now, maybe he doesn't have a kid on the team, but he's still biased for another reason. Maybe no, three is his favorite number. So number three, number three is the best, best player of the team because his favorite number is three. So he's biased for a different reason. That's a very silly reason. Number three is the best. Why? Because I could be, because three is my favorite number. But you, he wouldn't be honest about that. But maybe it's subliminal or subconscious. It's under the surface. Often a bias is something that exists down where we don't see it. And when someone says, you're just saying that because your favorite number is three. Then we say, no, no, I'm being, no, I'm objective. No, you're not. No, I am. So when it comes to things like politics, let's say Fox News or CNN. Well, traditionally, Fox News is on the right. That's their starting point. And so often when they represent a news story, it is biased toward that perspective. In other words, you're often getting the news story not as an alien would present it. Or I, what I would like to see is an alien news reporter, right, from presenting from a spaceship, totally unbiased, this is what happened. And this is what we think is going to happen next. And we're aliens and we don't care and we're unbiased. Well, we want all of humanity to die, so we're unbiased in that way. <laughs> Maybe they're biased against all of humanity, but not politically, right? But Fox News will be biased against good news for the Democrats and the liberals, right? Because they are on the right. They are more conservative. And so if they see a news story that might have an angle that's bad for the other side, they'll, they'll poke at that. And if it's bad for them, they'll maybe, they'll maybe avoid it and pretend it doesn't exist. In the same way, CNN, for example, tends to be more on the left. So if Donald Trump does something, oh, can you believe Donald Trump did this? I can't believe it. But then when somebody on their side, on the left, does something like that, they'll say, well, what? What? Oh, eh, not a big deal. Even if it's exactly the same thing. And of course, I'm biased too. But to me, that's pretty obvious. I have my own political opinions. What you're hearing from me must be biased because I have opinions. And I have a view on things. But I think I think that it would be hard to disagree with that. That's the, for example, news media, they're biased on one side or the other. So I hope that makes it clear, Naomi. Guys, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you could smash the like button. If you have a zombie hand, then do it with your zombie hand. Not just do it with your regular hand. That's fine. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and also check out the full courses which are on sale in the links in the description. I hope I answered your question, Naomi. If I didn't, how sad. Hustle Mew, his behavior with girls is beyond etiquette. They are clearly uncomfortable. What is happening? Something going on in the chat? Oh, I think you're talking about Trump, right? Or are you talking about Biden? <laughs> That's funny. You could be talking about either one because both of them have 
uh, behavior toward toward girls that are that's weird. <laughs> Biden likes to sniff ladies' hair secretly, and um, <laughs> and Trump is uh, very touchy feely. Are there any news about shenanigans in Michigan? What do you think about uh, your press? Do you think they're unbiased? Of course, as I mentioned, they are not unbiased. They're so biased, it's unbelievable. They are outrageously biased. They're, 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 they are mass, they're so deep in bias that they have no idea what their biases are. Um... GB Plus is back. Very nice. Hello, Luke. Good to see you. Well, election questions today. Let me see if I can answer this one. You know what? I wonder. I think it's based on the census. Let me search something. I think this is true. Yeah. Okay. Another election question. Hello, Luke, GB Plus says. Hello, Luke. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. I have a question. On what basis and when was the number of electors allocated to each state? And can this number change as the state's population increases or decreases? Yeah. So just for context, for those of you just watching this, the electors are this whole bunch of 538 people who are given to a candidate based on the popular vote of each state. And each state has a specific number of electors based on population. New York, 29. California, 55. Texas, 38, I think. So, does that change then? Is that true from the time of the starting of the United States, the founding of the country until now? No. Well, California wasn't a state at the founding of the United States. A lot of the current states were not states at that time. So, it's based on the census. And the census happens every 10 years. So my understanding of this is that it gets updated every 10 years. And then they will revise the number of electors. And the total number to win for a candidate is 270. And so the 2020 election, I'm sorry, the 2020 census, not the 2020 election, just happened. The election happened too, but the census just happened. They don't have the results in of the 2020 census. So as I understand it, they're going on the number of electors by state from 10 years ago, which was either the 2010 census or the 2011 census. I don't remember which year it happened. So that's when that's when it was last updated from my understanding. Now in that time, what has happened? Well, maybe more people have left California and gone to Texas. That's a trend these days. Or maybe people have left New York and gone to other states because they can work remotely. There are going to be a lot of things changing within a 10-year period. And so, as you say, the number of electors will be constantly updated to reflect that. Now, this is different from things that happen by district. So when it comes to uh, elections of the Senate or the House of Representatives or local elections, Often it's on a per voting district basis. And then you get this problem, and I recommend you look it up. It's called gerrymandering inside states. The way that districts are drawn is drawn to favor a certain side. So if my side, Republicans, are in charge of drawing the maps, we're going to draw the maps crazy so that we win. <laughs> We're more likely to win. This is drawing districts in order to favor yourself politically. And you'll see these crazy shapes where 
Instead of just two squares on the map, one will look like a snake that goes around like this that's been drawn just to, just to favor, uh, to favor, for example, Republicans. So look up the term gerrymandering, and this is a very interesting thing that I don't think really applies to the election of the president because that's done on a state by state basis. So, uh, so not so much. But for other elections, it is very relevant and interesting to look up. So that's an interesting question. The census is very important. A lot of things are decided based on the census, uh, including the, uh, the number of electors by state, because that's how, that's how we know how many people there are. So good question, GB+. Thanks. Welcome back. Guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can see future videos. And if uh, you haven't already, make sure to check out my full courses, which are on sale in the links in the description. All right. Great question from GB+. I hate when people do that. Why did I do that? Why, do people, why, did, why did I go... I hate when people do that. And it might be more complicated than that, a little bit more, GB+. Plus. I mean... With the process for deciding, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, generally speaking, it is based on the, the, the latest population, but. Did it again. What's wrong with me? Reapportionment. Okay, this is what I was looking for. This is more process oriented. All right, I'm going to read this out just because this is related to GB Plus's question. The process is called reapportionment. Uh, the 2010 decennial census altered states' weight in the Electoral College. Following each census, the United States Census Bureau conducts a process called reapportionment during which states are assigned a number of seats in the United States House of Representatives based on population. These changes to the way Americans select their president warranted an updated explanation of the system prior to 2012. Okay, so it may also be, explains the origins of electoral, it may also be that the, um, maybe the process is, it goes population, updates census, House of Representatives, then updates the electors. That's possible. I, I don't know the exact process. It ultimately comes down to population. It ultimately comes down to census. But if there's a step in between, I would need to research a little bit more about it. Anyway, that's probably boring for most of you. Yeah, the word gerrymandering is, is a beautiful word. It's a beautiful word. I think it's named after a person, if I remember correctly. Hey, Google, what does the word gerrymandering come from? Ah, okay. So it's actually named after a person. Gerrymandering is named after a vice president. I thought so. And apparently apparently he was in charge of a legislation that allowed him to draw a special district that would favor him in the shape of a lizard. <laughs> and and thus it was born. And thus it was born. Do you, ever, do you guys ever do anything that you do that annoys you, but you still do it? Like, I say the word dope a lot. That's so dope. But I hate when people say dope. But I say it. So what does that mean? Do you admire some entrepreneurs like Elon Musk or someone else? 
Yeah, I like Elon Musk. I mean, I think it's important to um, have some crazy things that we can hope for in the future. I think Elon Musk exaggerates. I think he creates poss possibilities in the future that are more or less likely to happen. But that's valuable because people need something to look toward. And it's better to be bold and slightly crazy than to be cautious. And let's just go step by step. Let's just be careful. I'm, I'm not in favor of that. I mean, we should have big dreams and move in big steps. When it comes to technology, maybe not, maybe not for everything. Lolly Lolly says, do you think this election system is fair? It's difficult to understand for the French girl that I am. And I think, Lolly Lolly, this is such a complicated question. And I'm not a political expert, to be very clear. So you're just getting the opinion of an idiot who happens to be an American. So I don't think anything is fair. And what I mean by that is, okay, so you have the Electoral College. This allows someone to win the popular vote, possibly, but lose the election. And okay, I can see how that is not fair. You got the most votes, but you lost. Somehow that's possible, and it happens. It happened in 2016. That's unfair. But it also depends on what you count as unfair. You could go to the voting process itself. Some places are basically designed to make it hard to vote, where they will put voting places in far away, hard to reach places for certain communities that, for example, they know will vote mostly this way or that way. Oh, this community, they'll probably vote mostly Democratic. Let's make sure the polling place is hard to get to for them. There is this sort of strategic thing that happens, and it happens on both sides, which is also unfair. And that makes people, some people say, ah, you know what, it's three hours, I have to wait in line. I just won't do it. Or they reduce the number of polling places. So that sort of thing happens, and that's not fair. But then there's a different kind of unfair. Another kind of unfair is the fact that the system favors gigantic amounts of money. So at this moment, there is something which allows huge companies to invest giant amounts of money in candidates because companies count as people. And as a result, you get these candidates that are approved by giant corporations that have so much money that they can stomp out everyone else. You might have this perfect candidate. This is the best possible person to be the president. But they can't get money because their political opinions might be against the interests of a giant pharmaceutical company. The pharmaceutical company can pump huge amounts of money into that candidate and make them win. So are they owned by those companies? Maybe. Yes, maybe so. And it's hard to find candidates who are not owned by giant companies. Some candidates go out and get most of their or all of their donations from regular people. That happens too, and they can be competitive. But often the ones who win are the ones that have the support of giant companies. What does that mean? Well, that means when they get in, the company says, huh, 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 remember us? <laughs> You're here because of us. Remember, wink, wink, do this thing. And they do. <laughs> and they do. So that's not fair. That means our, we, it looks like we have, oh, look at all the choices. But maybe all the choices are very similar. Because actually it's just giant companies who are saying, here are your 10 choices approved by giant companies. <laughs> approved and funded by huge corporations. Ugh. Great. So that's not fair either. And then... There's other kinds of not fair. The other kinds of not fair might be something like, well, who's actually qualified to vote? Well, everyone's qualified to vote. Well, that's great, but 
I, I, I don't really want, well, I want everyone to vote, but I also want everyone to be educated about issues. I don't know the percentage, but it feels like most people who go out to vote, they don't really know what the issues are. They don't really understand the candidates' positions. They haven't really done the research. And so they're just going out there and, bink, choosing something based on an advertisement that they saw or something. So that's not fair. So my fate is being decided by giant companies and dum-dums. And so that's not fair. So there are all kinds of not fair. And the Electoral College may be one of them, but I don't know if it's better or worse than using the popular vote. I would be in favor of saying you're not allowed, if you're a company, you're not allowed to give any money to candidates. No. In fact, the only way that candidates can get money is from regular people. And every person has a limit of a certain amount of money that they can give to a candidate. And that's it. That's the rule. And if you break that rule, you go to jail. That should be the rule, in my opinion. That would get huge amounts of money out of the system. And people could actually choose people that they really like and feel that they actually have power. Because if it's me and my five dollars, I want to donate to my favorite candidate. And then here's a giant company with million, $10 million, five dollars, ha ha ha. <laughs> right? I feel like, ah, okay, what's the point? I'll just go watch Netflix. So I know I'm kind of uh, being negative. But it's a negative situation. It's very sad. <laughs> So that's the situation in America. Democracy is a little bit broken. In my opinion, just my opinion. All right, guys. Anyway, um, I know this is not really an English question, but since we're talking about politics today, it's okay. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit the like button. Of course, subscribe and check out my full courses in the links in the description. No courses on politics, though. All English, spoken English, mostly, and grammar pronunciation, and so on. All right. Okay. So they still haven't announced it yet. I mean, it's done. It's over. But I don't think they've announced it. Presidential election results. Is the presidential election over? Um, yes, it's over. I know they have it. It's over. Okay, it's over. It's over. Andrew T says, system is so rigged and outdated, the world changed. Yes, the world changed and the system didn't keep up. I agree with that. That makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. Uh, is about the universe and science, but entertaining way is not boring. Wait, wait, wait. What are you talking about? Oh, Cosmos. Yeah. Naomi, in the last live, he recommended some documentary to watch. But I rec there are two different shows Cosmos. One is the one from the 70s or 80s by Carl Sagan, and the other is by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Both are good, but the one with Carl Sagan is amazing. It's the best. It's great. I love it. Let me, let me pop up a picture of Carl Sagan so you know the picture. It's just so magical. It's the most magical thing ever. It's so, 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 so magical. Um, let me pop up a picture here. Pop up a picture. Pop up a picture. Pop up a picture. Pop up a picture. Ah, yes. Here we go. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. This is Carl Sagan. This is the guy I'm talking about.
This system of election is the best all of the world. I don't know about that. There might be better systems out there. Um, why are there no electronic voting systems? What is the reason Hollywood and the U.S. press support Democrats as a rule? Yeah, they do tend to be more liberate, liberal. A lot of the large organizations that own the media companies favor that, and so that's what the media companies support. And um, uh, why do actors and actresses do that? Uh, that's a good question. I, I would have to maybe do a little more research. Hollywood definitely tends to be more liberal. You don't see that many Trump supporters who are in movies. In my particular opinion, presidents must be a little bit younger. Biden is 77 years old, and we are talking about four years or eight years, actually, Maria. Could be eight years. Yeah, I mean, and have you heard Biden speak? You can't even make a whole sentence. He's, he's, all, he's very old, and his brain is old, and he's probably starting to melt already. And can you imagine in eight years, he's going to be like a, a puddle of chocolate pudding on the ground. And, and what is that going to be like when the president is just a blob? That's going to be weird. <laughs> it's going to be weird. <laughs> it's already kind of a blob. Who's not going to win? Biden? Biden already won. It's over. For better or for worse, it is over, friends. But when are they going to actually officially announce it? That's what I want to know. Do you guys want to watch the news together? Do you want to watch the news? Um, when I searched... Election results on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> the only thing I saw was my own channel. Wait, you can't tell me I'm the only one that's saying this. It's, it's, it's done. It's over. It's over! Because of Pennsylvania. How did he win? Because of the mail-in ballots. It looked like... Trump was coming up, but that was misleading because most of the time the people who vote by mail are Democrats, and that's statistically true. And so if you start counting those votes, it takes several days, and so slowly Biden starts to come back. And once he passes the line where he's got more, then you know, okay, well, it's not going to, it's not going to go back and change directions. It's going this way. Biden is increasing because they're counting the mail-in votes. It's not going to go start going this way again. Oh, actually, we've got a bunch of mail-in votes for Trump. That is statistically very unlikely. Yeah, once Biden gets Pennsylvania, this game set match, game set match. Yeah, Biden, Biden, Biden won. You heard it here first. Uh, will legal challenges change the ultimate result? I'm not, I'm not, I don't know enough about what, I'm not an expert in the legal challenges of elections. I don't even know how that works. <clears throat> so I'm not sure. I mean, apparently Donald Trump is suing in Michigan where he lost to do the, a recount or something like that. I haven't been reading <clears throat> that part too carefully. So the question is, if there's this legal process <clears throat> if there's this, so here's here's the weird the weird. Let me drink a sip of coffee. My throat. <laughs> here's the weird thing. If there are a bunch of legal challenges to the election result from the Trump team, so let's say okay, Biden won, right? Now Donald Trump has legal challenges going on, maybe in Wisconsin and maybe in Michigan, maybe in Pennsylvania, let's say, whatever. Then, I don't know the, pro I, I'm not an expert here, but if these legal challenges actually hold up the results,
they actually say we can't announce the results because we have these legal things, these legal battles going on in the courts. Then what exactly, what exactly happens? Do we just not say who the president is for weeks? Officially, but everybody knows, but we can't say it? Is that what happens? Because once Pennsylvania is done, it's done, right? So it's done. Biden won. But these legal challenges, do they stretch it out? And how long can they stretch it out? Is it possible that they can actually reverse the result in states? Doesn't seem like it to me, but I'm, I'm not expert enough to know that, but it doesn't seem like it to me. On the other hand, a lot of the judges have been appointed by Trump. So I don't know about this whole legal thing. This whole legal thing is a, a whole other question. And I don't quite know what or how that ends up. If it goes on as is, then it's a pretty reasonably easy win for Biden. Not by a, a margin large enough, you know, for... Uh, for great confidence, but a fairly large margin. But this whole legal thing then also, if you can just legally pause an election, what is the long-term result of that? There's something called a legal precedent. If there's a precedent to say, I don't like the result, lawsuits, legal process, 10 months of all of this, then what happens? Then that happens every election? If it's close? Then what happens to elections in general? That's a scary possibility. That's a really frightening possibility. And then what happens if the president who says, I'm tired of waiting, I'm just president again, okay? I'm already here. Just forget all this, I'm still president. I'm still president because I say so. I refuse to leave. What happens then? I don't think that all of these things are insane possibilities. It sounds insane, but that's that's scary what if someone just says you know what this legal battle it's just it's all a wash i'm i'm still the president <laughs> because i say so that would be uh the end of probably uh, the united states right so anyway it's interesting to to watch and i i certainly am not enough of an expert on the legal side of the battles over election votes to say what is going to happen there but i will be watching it for sure and um, hopefully we can talk about it more in the future guys if you haven't already as i've said many times don't forget to hit the like button subscribe check out the full courses in the links in the description no english questions today all election questions my biggest fear about this election is the chance of a civil war. But what kind of civil war would it be? Because you don't have North versus South anymore. It's not it's clear that it's geographically divided, right? So is it inside of houses that there are civil wars? Where do the civil wars happen? Because it's too, it's very mixed up, right? The people who are against each other politically and hate each other politically, they live in the same households. You know, what is it? Me versus my grandma? I mean, what, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not against my grandma. She's great. I think the whole world is observing this election closer than ever before. That seems to be true. Mohammed says, do you think that Donald Trump will easily leave the White House, even though he knows clearly that he lost the election? Do you expect that the Republicans um, demonstration... Uh, well, what? Yeah, I mean, I don't know that that's a that's a danger. What if he just says, I'm not going to leave fake news, fake election. I won't leave. What if any president did that? What would happen? Would they have to send in the military? But he's in charge of the military. So who would send in the military? I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's it's something interesting to think about, but I have no idea. I, I think I think your question is good, Mohammed. It's a great question. I just <laughs> it's unprecedented in the United States, right? Unprecedented. <clears throat> Hi, Luke. Kana says Kana Maru says 
Hi Luke, I'm new here. I've been taking your courses on Skillshare. There are a lot of hands-on training and so helpful. Thanks a lot. Wow, thank you, Kana. I appreciate that. Finally, something about English instead of politics. <laughs> uh, yeah, my courses are on Skillshare. If you guys want to sign up for Skillshare, that is in the links in the description. Uh, I should note that if you do sign up for a full membership on Skillshare, that Skillshare gives me money. So that's just a, a notice. Um, but yeah, my courses are all on Skillshare. You can check those out. Skillshare is pretty cool. Thanks, Kana. Hustle me, hey, like, why do you use on the team, not in the team? Oh, an English question. Um, let me think about that for a second. Okay, I think I can answer this. Hustle Mew says, Hi Luke, why do we use on the team, not in the team? And the answer is that we can use both. But it's a difference of emphasis. So let me try to explain what I mean by that. If I say I'm on the basketball team, if I say I'm on the chess team, what I'm saying there is that's kind of my status, right? I am just a member. And it's sort of like you could stamp a badge on me that says basketball team person or chess team person, right? So, on the team. We're not focusing on me in the context of the others on the team, of those around me. And we don't usually talk about it that way. So that's why we usually say on the team. Usually we're talking about someone and their status. That's a label I can put there on your shirt. Chess, basketball, whatever it may be, right? And so, we say on most of the time. But... There are also times when we say in. And in might be more common for the workplace because in the workplace, we don't have as often very clear labels. This is this team. This is that team. Sometimes we're just working with a group of people and we're in a certain department, but we might be a team within a department and it might not have a clear name. And so there we might more often be talking about ourselves in the context of the actual people around us on the team, right? Those within. And so, if I say, in my team, Daniel is probably the smartest, and Catherine is probably the most intuitive, and Joseph may be the best leader, and I'm, I'm the idiot on the team, <laughs> or whatever, you know? So when I say the actual thing, I say, I'm, I'm the idiot on the team, right? So we still use on the team there, but when we're talking about us, we're here in this team, Joseph, in this team, Catherine, Daniel, me, in this team, we're focused now on the relationships between the individuals. We're focused now on the individual characteristics of the people. We're focused on our individual roles, and there we can also use within the team. So in the team, who is the best leader? Within this team... We need to come up with a shared understanding of this project, right? And that is among us sort of feeling. So it's not that one is right and one is wrong. On the team, he's just more that status type of thing. In the team is more the relationships within the team, something that's shared among us to give us that among feel. So that's generally how it works. None of them are wrong. None of them are wrong. It's all about emphasis. So I hope that makes sense. Hustle Mew. Guys, if you have other questions about this kind of thing, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to, of course, subscribe, hit the like button, and check out my full courses, which are on sale in the links in the description. Uh, what's the difference between among and throughout? That's a good one, too. Why is Sleepy Joe the best option, or is he? Uh, who said Sleepy Joe is the best option? I never said that. I didn't vote, so I, that means I think... You want to know my real political opinion on this one? 
I didn't vote because my clear feeling was not voting and being silent is better than choosing because not voting is voting with silence. So my thought was if because I'm a I'm a registered Democrat or right? I'm supposed to vote Democrat because that's you have to register for a party. So whatever. So. I'm supposed to vote for Joe Biden, but I didn't. So what I thought might happen was that Biden would maybe lose. And if he lost, then there would be blame. Whose fault is this? And I wanted to be blamed. I wanted people to say, you didn't vote. How could you? And I wanted them to ask me, okay, why didn't you vote? Okay, then I'll tell you why I didn't. Please ask me. I want to be blamed. So I didn't want to be in a situation where I voted for one or the other because I, I want to be at fault for the result, for being the one who didn't choose, the silent majority. And I'm, because I think they're the ones who have the clearest reasons for not choosing. Because my sense was, should I choose this pile of brown poop or this pile of brown poop? They're both orange poop. They're both just piles of poop. <laughs> really, I mean, I think they're both kind of just idiots. So, but that's just my opinion. Sorry. I hope I don't lose followers because of this, guys. I don't like either of them. Okay. But I do think Donald Trump is very funny. I think Donald Trump is hilarious. I like Donald Trump personally <laughs> the US politics even Biden becomes president the Senate is against him and he can't get much at all through very very fair point hi Zuli very fair point Yeah, so that's another factor. There's also the Senate and the House of Representatives. Looks like the House of Representatives will remain a Democratic uh, majority, and then the Senate will remain a Republican majority. So you have a Democratic president. You'll have so you have a Democratic administration, president. Then in Congress, there are two branches, or two rather two two groups, not two branches, two houses. Yes. And one is called the House of Representatives. One is called the Senate. The Senate will remain Republican and the House of Representatives will remain Democratic. Then you have the uh, Supreme Court and the Supreme Court will be mostly Republican. So hard to make decisions when things are that mixed up, right? Especially if the president is kind of a step-by-step step kind of guy let's just go really careful and really slow i don't know about these crazy ideas people want health care what what janaki see you later thanks leo uh namiral i don't like either personally i think trump's a moron and biden's a panderer hard to disagree it's hard to disagree. Although you have to admit, I don't think you can deny that Donald Trump is a master of getting people worked up, getting controlling the media, making them upset so they'll talk about him more, and social media, Twitter. You have to admit that he's a Twitter master. And you have to, I think you have to admit that he's, he's funny. He is funny. Donald Trump is very funny. <clears throat> How do I know Biden has won? Yeep. Uh, he's won because of Pencil Pennsylvania, because he crossed the line in Pennsylvania, and so it's basically done. No, I'm not. I'm. I don't know if I would say describe myself necessarily as a leftist, but just mathematically, just mathematically, it's uh, the mail in the mail in ballots. So, but there's the whole legal question that I don't know about. Again. If you just joined Heisley, um, or sorry, Yeep English, I don't care who wins the election. 
I really, really don't. I notice when you get Republicans and then Democrats or the other way around, they cancel all the stuff the last president did in their service. Yeah, that's an interesting thing as well. That's, that definitely happens. Yep, absolutely. And is that, yeah. So what does that mean? Are you, are you saying we should have kings who are there for life? Robo kings, artificial intelligence uh, dictators. Most people in the East Coast voted for Joe Biden, correct? East Coast, except for the South. Mo the South mostly goes Trump. You will see that he will get reelected in the courts. I think it would be better not to talk politics while teaching English. You're promoting your political tendencies, aren't you? Yeah, maybe. Um, I mean, it's it's my channel, so I can kind of do whatever I want. So, I mean, if you don't like it, then I would encourage you to get out. But also welcome to stay. I mean, it's really just an. Ex I don't. I don't think that that exploring this question is out of the scope because a lot of people have asked me about what's going on with the election. So I wanted to just take a little time for this one to focus on how the electors work and all of that stuff. Now, you, you, you think that uh, the, he will get reelected in the courts. The court question, I don't know about. So I, I honestly can't say I know enough about the court process. So I'm saying that Biden wins on the premise of just where the votes are going. Okay, When it comes to the legal question, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know about the court process. It's ver it seems very complicated. And uh, maybe I'll go on your channel and tell you what kind of content you should do. But thanks for the question. Maybe a democratic country without billionaires interfering with companies and such. Maybe so. And also, Yeep, am I biased politically? Of course, everyone is. You obviously are. I can tell you're biased just by reading your, your comment. So you're obviously biased. Everyone is biased. I'm definitely biased, 100%, of course. I would not claim not to be biased. Uh... The way I see, it's okay to talk about politics, but also it's civil, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. So, here's here's the thing. If, it, if things get too, too civil, this is a good question. Andrew T. says, it's okay to talk about politics, but also if it's civil, if that makes sense. So, I think... This is true and also not true at the same time, because a lot of the time, politics is considered taboo. Don't talk about politics at the dinner table, that sort of thing with your family members. But I, I don't agree with that because I think conversations about politics, if normal people are not having those conversations, then what is the purpose of living in a democracy, right? So we should be having those conversations. Most of my family have one political tendency, I may have another. So we should have a conversation about that. And that might sometimes get heated. We might, I don't I think you're wrong about that. I disagree, right? So I think that that kind of conversation where we get excited about our political views and we argue about it, we debate, I think that's positive. So I think even sometimes angry conversation can be a good thing. What I think goes too far is when we are so isolated in our opinions that we can't even look at the other side, that we we shout and then we close ourselves off to the other side, the other view. Because if a huge group of people believe something, there must be a reason for that. So can you go into their way of thinking and possibly see some of those reasons? Or could you come into my way of thinking and see some of my reasons? And so we might argue and debate but the civility part, I think, is the open-minded part. If we just shout at each other and then close the door and say, now I won't listen to you, 
I said my thing. Now you shut up and don't say your thing because I've said my thing. You listen to me, but I won't listen to you. That's where I think the issue is. So I think having political conversations is great. Arguing is great. Debating is great. Politics should be fiery and excited. But open-mindedness is just as important. Listening is just as important. Right? If someone says an opinion to me that sounds crazy, I at least have to try my best to think, why do they have this opinion that seems crazy? And is there anything about it that might be reasonable? And if, if we can't do that, then that's a problem. That's why I think it's a problem that we have these filter bubbles where when we start searching things on YouTube or in Google, then the algorithms start to show us more and more of those things and we go down these holes and we get lost down these holes called filter bubbles of our own opinions and we never see opposite views. I think it's very important to always expose yourself to the other views out there to constantly get a feeling for what else other people are saying and why they th why they might think that right so so civility no but listening yes and is politics taboo i don't think it should be just my opinion and um, i'm in favor i'm in favor of arguing but i'm not in favor of blocking people i don't agree with you you're blocked right i've had someone block me on facebook because i made a comment under their shared post that disagreed with their post. That's what the comment section is for. I wasn't overly rude, and they blocked me immediately. That I don't understand. Let's have the conversation. All right. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Apparently, this is our politics day. Hopefully, our only one. <laughs> I prefer talking about English. And if you haven't already checked out my full courses, make sure you do that in the links in the description. But Yeep, so, well, let's have a conversation then, Yeep. How can anyone in their right mind stand for open borders, higher tax taxes, illegal immigration, Green New Deal, and a senile old man who doesn't even know where he is? Yeah, I especially agree with your last point. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> what? I'm running for Senate? No, you're running for president, Mr. Biden. Oh, Oh, that's good news. But see, it, let's, I mean, let's talk about it. Um, we probably disagree on some of the things that you're saying. But I, that, the thing, the, the first part of your comment there, how can anyone in their right mind isn't it possible that because many millions of people do believe in some of these things, that perhaps they are not 100% insane? Otherwise, then you have to accept the possibility that people you disagree with are completely insane. Now, if you're willing to say that, all right, maybe they are completely insane. But then they might say that you're completely insane. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's the back and forth. So, um, I, I mean, the, okay, so you're, you've made your political opinions clear, and I think that's cool, and I think I know the reasons that you think that, but um, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to debate the points with you, because I'm not I'm trying not to focus too much on my political views in this live stream, but I'm sure I have <laughs> by accident anyway. But I, I just think, you know, if there, there's a reason people believe what they believe, right? And there's, a, there's this very easy tendency to just say, oh, they don't agree with me? They must be completely nuts. Lock them up in, a, in an insane asylum. <laughs> you know, that's the thing we want to do because we, we don't want to believe that Someone could have a totally reasonable opinion that's the opposite of ours. It makes us feel very insecure. If you have the opposite opinion of me, I, I need to know that you're nuts so that I feel good about my opinion. I have to know that you're completely insane. <laughs> because that makes me feel secure, right?
Um, which one does not make sense to you? Um, I don't accept the premise. Open borders. I that is. Uh, I think that's that's not an accurate um, word. Higher taxes is not also uh, not quite as simple as just saying higher taxes. It's not that. It's not that simple. Each of the things that you said requires probably a 20-minute conversation. And I can't just say yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, right? I don't, I don't think open borders is even... I don't think anyone believes in open borders. Nobody thinks open borders is a good idea. Higher taxes would require a giant conversation about, well, higher taxes when and for whom and why and what is it used for? Very long conversation. Illegal immigration... What kind of illegal immigration? Which problem are you talking about? Are you talking about refugees? Are you ta so that's that's a whole conversation. Green New Deal, that's a name for a an inevitability, right? We're going to run out of oil someday, so that's just a name that's been stamped on one way to talk about what's going to happen, which is the need to move toward more renewable energy. So so we're not going to have oil and gas forever. So in a hundred years. Nobody will be able to have the opinion that oil and gas are necessary because there won't be any. So uh, then it's just a question of details, right? So Green New Deal is just one name. See now, old, old man thing, uh, no argument. Um, coming from my perspective on illegal immigration and stuff, people who been in this states who has a green card or getting one are placed on hold i know some personally been on hold for four years yeah so i can speak to this because my wife has a green card and she is waiting for her citizenship i don't know if it's on hold though because there have been changes and updates in the process so i think it's just slowed down i don't think it's on hold just slower Okay. Ah, I see. Yeep is talking about the um, southern border. Prior to the wall being built by Trump, people poured into your country, buddy. I'm sure you know that. Um, sure. But, I, I mean, they, they still are. It's just... A matter of degrees it's it's not that simple I don't think but yeah a lot of illegal immigration happening from the southern border even USA got English as their language even after the Britain invasion attempt Britain invasion what's that <laughs> In what way? I'm not sure where the conversation is going. Is it a good thing that Trump did? Well, I don't know if you know this, but Obama uh, deported many more people than Trump did. That's a left position. How do you feel about that? I'm not a big Obama fan either. I'm just saying. Uh, and I don't really don't want to get into detail, detailed policy. I was trying to avoid very detailed political conversations. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Heizuli says, I think Britain is still great. Smaller in size than Finland, but a powerhouse. Okay. All right. Well, I was... Um, if there are no more questions, there are sort of broader questions that don't require a detailed political view that I prefer to avoid... Maybe we'll call it a day. What do you guys think? I'm getting a little hungry, honestly. What's hap what happens if there is a tie in the Electoral College? I feel like I learned that in school. Let me look that up. Let me look that up. Tie in the Electoral... I think the Vice President decide. Who decides? Or maybe there's a vote in the House of Representatives? That is a good question. What happens, I know I learned this in, in, in middle school or something. 
uh, the, um, uh, what happens if there's an electoral college tie? Mm, many serious scenarios open. Okay. At that point, according to the 12th Amendment, the newly elected House chooses the president among the three leading candidates according to the Electoral College vote. The new Senate, meanwhile, gets to pick the vice president, also among the three leading candidates. So if there's an Electoral College vote, it means that the House of Representatives picks. Or, uh, sorry, if there's, a, if there's a tie in the Electoral College, then the House of Representatives votes, which would mean that Biden would win, but then the Senate chooses the vice president, so then they would choose. Does that mean Trump would be vice president? <laughs> That'd be, that wouldn't happen, would it? Would it? <laughs> Can you imagine? The original system for electing president provided that the candidate receiving a majority of electoral college votes would become president, while the runner-up would become vice president. Um, the 1800 election resulted in a tie between Thomas Jefferson. Um, wait, where am I here? Resulted in a tie between Thomas Jefferson and Aaron Burr. Under the Constitution, this stalemate, or tie, sent the election to the House of Representatives, which chose Jefferson. So the House chose Jefferson. The states soon ratified the 12th Amendment to the Constitution, requiring separate contests for the offices of president and vice president. So, yeah, same thing, basically. If there's a tie, the House of Representatives chooses the president and the Senate chooses the vice president, which would mean, legally, if the House of Representatives chose Biden as president, then the Senate would choose Trump as vice president. So you'd have a Biden Trump. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine Donald Trump as vice president? Just seeing the White House. What? <laughs> That's crazy. Very funny. Heizuli says you should be proud of who you are supposed to be, not who you are. Keep your vote and mind in things that make things good for you. Cool. How does it mean they could make Trump Vice President Biden president? Yeah. I mean, I don't think that would actually happen, right? That, 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 there's no way in the modern world that's just an impossibility. There would be some, they would figure it out some other way. I don't know how, but that sounds insane. Yeah, that would be very funny. What would happen, GB Plus says, what would happen if some of the electors changed their choice against their role and changed the result? Wow, that's a really good question. I apologize for looking it up, but I've got to look it up. Can electors change their votes? Let's see. Because it should be on population, right? They get You get the electors of the majority of the votes in the state. Right, it's simple. Faithless electors. I've heard this term before, but I've never really looked it up. Okay, so GB Plus's question here. What would happen if some of the electors changed their choice against their role and changed the result? Even for the price of imprisonment, is it all purely theoretically possible? And I've just got the Wikipedia article open here. So, so let me just read what I have on this concept called faithless electors. In the United States elections, a faithless elector is a member of the United States uh, Electoral College who does not vote for the presidential or vice presidential candidate for whom they had pledged to vote, meaning that they vote based on the popular vote in the state. That is, they break faith with the candidate they were pledged to and vote for another candidate or fail to vote. A pledged elector is only considered a face a faithless elector by breaking their pledge. Okay. Electors are typically chosen and nominated by a political party. 
and or the presidential nominee, they are usually party members with a reputation for high loyalty to the party and its chosen candidate. Thus, a faithless elector runs the risk of a party censure and a political retaliation from their party, as well as a potential, uh, potential legal penalties in some states. State laws may impose a fine on an elector who fails to vote according to their statewide or district popular vote, uh, force an elector to vote for the candidate they pledge to vote, or disqualify an elector who violates their pledge and provide a replacement elector. So it looks like there's a legal process and punishment in place that they can't they can't do it. During the 1836 election, Virginia's entire 23-man electoral delegation faithlessly abstained from voting for various Democratic vice presidential, oh, sorry, victorious Democratic vice presidential nom nominee, Richard M. Johnson. The loss of Virginia's support uh, caused Johnson to fall one electoral vote short of a majority, causing the vice presidential election to be thrown into the U.S. Senate for the only time in American history. Which means what? It means it didn't happen, or it, 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 it can happen. It's possible for it to happen. It did happen in the past, uh, but it looks like you have to do it in a large group. 23 people said, nope, we're not voting, and maybe there was no punishment in place for them, or maybe they got fined or whatever, but they actually caused a real change in results, which is that uh, the, the uh, decision was given to the Senate. Interesting. We're learning a lot about, I'm learning a lot about politics today. Um, why are people moving from California and New York to Texas? I think there are a lot of reasons. I think one reason is the wildfires. People are tired of leaving their homes because everything is burning. And uh, it's also because I think of all of the maybe restrictions uh, in place about local businesses and things like that may also have something to do with the tax rate. It may also also have something to do with the fact that Los Angeles has a lot of homelessness. I think there are a lot of reasons that people may leave, and it may be any one of those or others. But you can go on YouTube and search famous YouTubers who are leaving California for other states, like Joe Rogan, for example. Why are people moving from California to Texas? Thank you. I'm so glad you finally see um, the live session live. So interesting. Thanks, GB+. Uh, I know this is a weird one since we're talking so much about politics. I'll try not to do many of these. I don't even want to do these. <laughs> I thought we would just talk about how the election works, and then I would answer English questions. Whatever. I have to say, if people like you choose not to vote, and I view you as smart, I've seen you very uh, quickly think of different aspects of things and answer, uh, yet you stay calm. Shame you didn't vote for one that deserves to be president. This is a matter of perspective. I mean, there I would just have to say, what? Agree to disagree, right? Um, I just see it as two different things. I see them both as equally bad for different reasons. I think Trump is bad for one reason, and I think Biden is bad for another reason. And just know that it's not a random decision not to vote. I'm voting. I'm voting. My silence is a vote because I want that to be part of a conversation. I want people who know I didn't vote to ask me in person, please tell me why you didn't vote. If Biden lost, I want Biden to come to my house. I'll make him a cup of coffee. Probably cause him to have a heart attack because he's so old. But then he'll say, once he recovers, why didn't you vote for me? And then I'll give him an answer. And I'll say, if this, 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 and this, things that I want, I would have voted for you. But none of those things, so I didn't. I don't believe in voting for the lesser of two evils. First of all, I don't accept that that, that is the lesser of two evils. In the long term, especially. Second, I think... That's an imp I think that that is the wrong conclusion to say that it's either yes or no. There's a third possibility. 
Silence is a vote. It's a vote for it's a vote for a future. It's a vote for silence is a vote for things that I want, none of which were, were presented to me. Silence is a vote for policies that I would like, and none of these policies were supported by people that I like. These are things that I want. None of you support these things, and therefore I will not vote for you. So I'll be silent because I'm actually voting for these five things because they exist out there, but not in either of your platforms. So I'm not going to vote for you because I'm voting for this, but no candidate supports this. So I'm not voting. That's why I thought about it. But anyway, I, I appreciate your opinion. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, you know, I understand. I understand the lesser of two evil argument. I understand that the Trump argument, I think I understand. Luba says, I would vote for Lucas president. You have to be 35 years old to be president of the United States. And you have to be born in the United States. You have to be a natural citizen. This is breaking news, but I was actually not even born on planet Earth. I was born, I was born on a planet known as Ganebel Ganubi. No, sorry, Zenebel Ganubi. And, um, it's a nice place, and I someday I hope to go back. It's my dream. I arrived. I was I was brought here um, by my people to learn about to learn about the humans and report back. That's my mission. Understand the humans. So far, I got nothing. I have a notebook I'm supposed to bring back, and it's empty. I just have a drawing of a cup of coffee. And a slice of pizza. That's all I've got. <laughs> 30, 32 years. Uh, today's live uh, session brought many great words and great content. Wow. Like census, gerrymandering, tie in the new context. And also the interesting questions. I've learned some things as well. For example, what happens if there's a tie? Hustle Muse says there are smart people in local elections. I agree with that. That's a good point. Local elections are very important. Um, Iran's people want to win to Trump and Pakistan's people want Joe Biden to win. Okay. I did not know that. Interesting. Do you want to share, do you want to share why that is, Chorak? Uh, we in here, Nordic Europe, have very simple elections compared to your Grand USA. Yeah, I would like to learn more about the way that the Nordic elections work. Um, hi, Zali. Hope I'm saying your name correctly. Off-topic question. Finally. Oh, finally. Andrew T. Um, do you think we'll ever come up with a solution to wildfires? Okay. This is starting to get into territory where, guys, I'm just a, I'm just a, a dummy from Zenebel Ganubi, and I don't know the answers to these questions. Wildfires. Um... Maybe if there was some way to do controlled burns and limit it, because I know that when it, I've, I saw a TED talk about wildfires once, and wildfires are natural things, but and they they create meadows they create areas that are that are necessary for the whole ecosystem they're a natural phenomenon they're a very important part of any forest right and but in populated areas we suppress this thing that's trying to happen naturally for the sort of broader ecology right so we suppress it and then it builds up in potentiality meaning that one person doing a gender reveal party can start a giant wildfire that drives 3,000 people out of their homes that takes a week to put out. So I wonder if there are ways to allow for some of that natural process to happen in a very controlled way. To say, every three years we burn this area 
and we have it, we're set up for it from the beginning. We burn section A. Because you know how uh, crop rotation works, right? Crop rotation is, okay, if you grow, if you're a farmer and you grow corn this year, this year, and the next year, that's going to cause a nitrogen problem for your soil. And so the next year you should probably grow soybeans. And the next year you should grow soybeans again, maybe. And there's this thing called a crop rotation. So you go corn, soybeans, wheat, corn, soybeans, wheat. And you're a big farmer, so you have a bunch of fields and you have it all mapped out. This, this year, this, because you're trying to preserve the quality of your soil. And I don't know all of the details, but that's generally what it looks like. Corn, soybeans, wheat, corn, soybeans, wheat. Not necessarily in that order anyway, but that's the idea. So I wonder, maybe, maybe if you say, okay, we surround this area and we burn it every three years, this specific region. Burn region A this year, burn region B that year. When you, it's a controlled burn situation and it's very strategic and it's well planned. I wonder if that would help. I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about, but um, anyway, that's, that's, that's something to, um, to look up, to research. I'd like to know more about it. I watched a TED Talk about it that was really good. So if you search TED Talks, then you can find wildfire, natural wildfires. He might have talked about something along those lines as well. Gabe says, just because Kyle Clancy says something doesn't make it true. Yeah, true. A lot of people have mentioned that, um, you know, in the courts, things change. But um, also, <laughs> YouTube titles. What are you going to do? <laughs> Wildfire is normal in the game. Can you explain what you mean by that, Hasu Mew? What does that mean exactly? Does anybody play Don't Starve the game? Oh, the game is called Don't Starve. Well, I don't know, but it would be cool to do a game, a sort of live streamed game with some of you guys. If any of any English learners here are interested and have a good game that's very streamable, that people could play, that I could play, that we could play together. That would be really fun to live stream a sort of game where we're all talking together. I, I'm very interested in that, but I don't know which one would be best. We'd probably have to start a Discord. What is the solution for the fear of criticism and making mistakes when it comes to English speaking, especially when the learner tries to sound like a native? Aha! At last, an English question. I will answer that. Gabe says, haha, gotcha. Got me. What did you get? What did you get, Gabe? Go subscribe to Gabe's YouTube channel. Also, I did see it announced in several places. Um, a projected announcement. I saw it in my news feed. Oh, different gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, if, here, what'll happen? Let's see. If something crazy happens in the courts and Trump ends up winning, fine. I'll have to change the title of this video, <laughs> which I'll do. <laughs> uh, all right. Or, or maybe there's another possibility. Gabe, if you know things, we're talking about this stuff now. So if you know things, please share. Gabe knows things. The press has said Biden was um, guaranteed for a year now. <sighs> yeah. Tell us the things you know, Gabe. Doesn't America have young wise men which would like to be a president whom people would support? Yeah. Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> um, what is the solution to the fear of criticism? All right, I'm going to answer an English question. Please, can I answer an English question? Good God. This has turned into something. I wanted to just talk about the election map and explain what electors are and the electoral college is. Very basic middle school uh, level stuff. We're getting to all of these questions um 
I'm surprised it hasn't gone completely off the rails. Maybe it will. But we have at last a, an English question. So, thank God. Mohammed Shakar says, What is the solution for the fear of criticism and making mistakes when it comes to English speaking, especially when the learner tries to sound like a native? So, a lot of it comes down to the simple fact that it's not done enough, right? In the same way that you don't feel confident on the first day of a job, in the same way that you don't feel confident when you're doing almost anything for the first time, playing tennis, you feel kind of shaky and what do I do? In the same way, when you're trying to sound natural in front of people who you think might be judging you, you might feel nervous. And what happens when people feel nervous? Nervousness has a real effect on performance in many different categories. So if you're nervous, you're not going to be able to find the words that you already know. You're not going to be able to remember all the lessons that you had, all the studying that you've done. But if you do it a lot, you'll get over it and it'll be a natural process of gaining confidence. So the main suggestion would be to find the path Find the path of most resistance. Put yourself in difficult situations as often as you can. And the pain will gradually decrease over time. You'll find yourself in challenges that are much greater than the ones you're facing now. Giving presentations and doing proposals. Very difficult things that right now may seem very difficult for you. And you'll look back on where you are now and you'll say, ha, I can't believe it. And that's just a natural process of always being at the edge of your ability, always pushing yourself to do the slightly harder thing. So in general, when it comes to opportunities to speak English, to use English, to practice English, to have conversations, to give presentations, to join Toastmasters, to join a meetup group and practice conversations, take all of those. Take the left road. The left road is the one that has a slight uphill grade. It shouldn't be a cliff because you can fall off of a cliff, but it should be an uphill, a difficulty, a struggle, a slight pain starting a YouTube channel, right? Speaking in front of people if whenever you have the opportunity, rather than in all of those situations, not doing it. Eh, maybe not. Eh, next time. Eh, maybe the next time. And, and that's going to naturally cause you or allow you to become really confident and comfortable, at least much more so. But you also just have to realize that people don't really care that much. So if you think everyone is judging you all the time, it's mostly you judging them as judging you. You're looking through their eyes with your eyes and you're coloring what they see with your own knowledge of your own inadequacies. You judge things in yourself as not good and then you project those not good things onto the glasses of other people that then look at you. But that's not real. That's just in your head. And they might judge you for a quick moment, 10 seconds, and then they're going to go back to doing whatever they were doing. Most people don't care, right? If people do silly things, they go, ha, huh, what about what a silly thing that is. And then they, they, they go back to cutting the grass. So that might help you relax a little bit. And then the last thing is just habits, 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 habits. So, for example, if you're thinking about 100 things when you're trying to speak and you make a lot of mistakes, that's because some of those things are not as deep habits as they need to be. So you have to work those things down into the muscle memory space. And that would be something like pronunciation. If you have to think about how to pronounce the word 12, for example, you have to think about that as you're speaking then it's going to take up some of your bandwidth, your mental bandwidth. How do I say that again? Then you, have to, then you have to try to fit the whole sentence together and you have to think about the tense of the sentence. You have to think about the structure and all of these things. But you have only so much concentration bandwidth in your head. This is the bandwidth problem. So what do you do? You try to get all of as many of those things as possible, if not all of them, into the muscle memory space, which is sort of around the walls of your bandwidth cable, right? So that's pronunciation. So you practice the pronunciation of 12 
a thousand times until you can say it without thinking about it. And if it's a habit, then when you speak, it just comes out correctly every time. Then you can focus on what you're saying. So you have to work on habits because repetition and habits and practice are the things that allow you to move from trying to concentrate on everything to concentrating on one thing. And if you don't have those habits, then it's going to it's not going to happen for you. You'll never feel really comfortable. So work on your habits especially. And to do that, just practice speaking every day. Sit down, write a word down on a piece of paper. Maybe it's the word theme of the day, democracy. And then talk about anything that comes to mind related to that word for two minutes. And because you're recording it on your phone, then go back and listen to it and take some notes on things you could improve. And then if there's a word that sounds weird, repeat that word many, many times until you can say it without thinking about it. And then there you go. And that's true for also learning, learning vocabulary as well. It's a good question. Thank you for the question, Mohammed. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe, of course. And also check out my full courses, which are on sale, in the links in the description. Gabe says, the press has said Biden was guaranteed for a year now, but they get kneecapped by the... But uh, Yes, but they get... Okay. Well... Huh? We're going to talk about it later. Gabe and I have a phone call scheduled. Gabe's going to tell me some stuff. Andrew says, are you an English teacher or just help out about English? I am an English teacher. That is my job. So I mostly my main job is uh, making courses for English learners. So if you're working on your English and you want to improve your pronunciation or you want to uh, improve your... Um, ability to think in English, or you are working on idioms, phrases, and so on, that is what I do. You can check out my courses. They're in the links. That is my job. That is my main job. Uh, Hustle Muse says, are you hungry? Yes, I am. I think we're going to call it a day today. Um, I don't know how I feel about today's live stream. Different from usual. Just random talk about politics, I guess. But uh, something to try. While I feel more comfortable with questions related to English learning, if you guys have cultural stuff that you want to explore, we can certainly do live streams about that. Luba says, how to get rid of the fear that I can forget how to speak English when I skip a few weeks in speaking club. I think I got addicted to speaking club. Well, maybe, maybe, yeah, as long as that's not your only way of doing it, right? Is there a way to make speaking more part of your everyday life instead of just speaking club? Is there a way to keep a verbal diary where you, you record yourself speaking about what's going on in your life for five minutes a day? Then at least you're getting, getting it out there. You're saying something. You're practicing a little bit. You don't need a club to practice. It might help to have a club to practice. That's very useful, but you don't absolutely need it. There are other ways. So I would just encourage you, Luba, to make speaking part of a deeper part of the routine, if that makes sense. And while having a speaking partner is great and having a speaking club is great, find ways to do it by yourself, too. And a diary might be a good idea or the daily question or the daily topic or free talk and always record it. Always listen to it back. I know it's boring, but 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 what's the alternative is not practicing at all. Because getting the opportunity to speak with someone constantly is tough, right? But so the alternative is oh in the spaces where you aren't in the speaking club, you have no practice. So suffer for five minutes with boredom and just practice putting your thoughts together and record those. Fine. If you really want to engage yourself. I tell everyone to just start a YouTube channel. That's what everyone should do. Start a YouTube channel. I believe everybody should start a YouTube channel because it forces you 
to put your thoughts down and to speak and to say something. And it's not just you. You're not alone. You're there with people who want to watch you or not watch you or whatever. And so I think that's a good way to do it too. But not everyone uh, feels comfortable with that. So that's my real recommendation, but not maybe not the best fit for everybody. How about rap in English? Does it take a, long, a lot of time? Rap? Wonder Life? I'm not quite sure I understand what you mean by a long time. I found a way to practice. After waking up, I allow myself to think only in English as long as I can until my first word from my native language pops up in my head. The longer, the better. That's interesting. I've heard people who have improved by thinking in English only, and they force themselves to have little dialogues in their heads in English. Some people seem to be more visual and don't often have those voices in their heads as clearly. But for those people who can have little dialogues and role plays in their heads only, it's, it's good, actually. Um, someone once told me that they had a student who improved a lot and prepared for the IELTS test in that way and did well with it. Yeah. All right, guys. Someone asked what I'm going to eat. Um, um, I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks a lot for joining. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the questions. I appreciate all the comments. I appreciate the disagreements. It's um, fun to see your opinions from a different point of view, not just talking about English. Uh, if you have other things you want to talk about, let me know. Message me. Um, and otherwise, I'll see you next time. Next week, we have English Movie Night and a couple more live streams. So I'll see you there. And thanks, guys, for joining. Bye-bye.